In this video, we're going to be talking about my adventure down figuring out how to vacuum form 3D printed bucks for a tiny whoop enclosure. Now, it's kind of a bizarre story, but uh, I think I'll put the video link up here for the vacuum forming and all that other business if you want to see that. But if we move forward with what we've got here, I think I'm onto something pretty cool because uh, let's take a look. So this is a 3D printed uh, buck, which is essentially just the, the piece that you vacuum form the plastic down over. And one of the things, I guess let me take a step back. Uh, one of the things that I was using, so like with this, you can see that there's a 3D printed mount for the camera, or there's like a injection molded piece, or you can, here's another style of 3D printing. And with the 3D printed ones, a lot of times I found that if it wasn't just a perfect uh, design, when you clip in your camera, after a crash or something, the camera itself can change orientation, and then it's really difficult to get the camera to, to stay just right. Uh, you can hot glue it, you can do all that stuff, but if you turn these on and they get hot, either the hot glue will melt the, uh, the dab of glue that's holding it in position, or the camera itself gets so hot that the 3D printed mount actually will melt, which is what happened with this one here. So uh, another, you know, these are injection molded, so this is a really rigid, good one that won't uh, melt in high temperature. Um, but they add a lot of weight. So um, we'll kind of get to weights here in a second. But anyways, that's why I was looking at doing something a little bit different that I didn't want to just 3D print a mount for all the stuff to clip into, but I wanted to vacuum form something because I'm kind of playing with this new, to me it's a new technology, and I'm kind of learning what the limits are and everything. So uh, this was the first buck that I uh, <laughs> printed out, this the uh, tiny poop, and um, it didn't have much of a, uh, a flange here on the side. And you can see with when I drew these down, it uh, didn't have much of a lip. And I quickly learned that um, when you don't have a lip, the, the canopy, the plastic will actually crack very easily. Um, and when you add a bevel, like what you see on this, that actually increases the strength of the, the plastic uh, geometry a lot better, or a lot more. So I went from something like this on the vacuform table to something like this that's a little bit raised and has a, a beveled edge so that I can cut around it and have that nice uh, shape. So that's just kind of a quick tip. Don't do vacuum form with it like this just straight on the table if you want strength for a canopy. Okay, moving on. Um, I mentioned uh, weight. So let's just take a real quick, uh, let's see how much weight am I actually saving with by using this vacuum form stuff. Let's just take a quick look. So what I've got here is a standard or typical uh, injection molded uh, camera and then this is just a, a whoop um, canopy that you can get so it's like two grams okay so you're looking at two grams of plastic to hold all of your electronics in place this is my system here and this holds the electric in place like you can see on this tiny whoop and then this is the canopy and it like perfectly locks in and like once they're down and bolted together it's like one whole unit and it makes the frame more rigid and it's super strong so I'm really happy with the way that turned out, but when you put that on, it's like one gram. So you're shaving an entire gram off by not using the stuff and by using uh, the uh, just vacuum form pieces, which is pretty awesome, or 0.9 grams, whatever. That's a pretty big weight savings when you're dealing with whoops. All right, so now that we've confirmed that we can save weight doing this, this is how I have it set up. Um, now this is a 15 millimeter spacing. So like the camera board itself is 15 millimeters wide and the VTX is 15 millimeters wide. If you get something like this, that's like the 200 milliwatts, which I wouldn't mess with in a whoop anyways, um, that's too wide. It won't fit in this uh, custom vacuum formed enclosure that I have. So uh, make sure that if you're gonna do this, it's a 15 millimeter wide camera and video uh, transmitter. Um, but as you can see here, I cut a little slit in this and then all the uh, wires run through into the hole in the center and then your camera just clips into the little spot. And uh, it's cool because it has these channels that keep the camera from rotating. Once the, the canopy goes on, it squeezes this together and locks everything down, and keeps it from bouncing out. And then also this fits right in there, no problem. Another cool thing is a lot of these uh, flight control boards have these antennas and they say, don't bend the antenna or don't bend it down. Well, uh, with this little uh, vacuum form deal, I poked a hole in the top of this little uh, column, and so now the antenna just comes right out, and it's not in danger of getting bent or anything. It just comes right through it, which is really cool. A lot of times with the 3D printed um, pieces, the antenna would have to take a sharp angle going away from it and then up, and then, you know, of course, when you bend an antenna sharply, that's not good for your reception. All right, so uh, then we'll take this. Now, I do have to bend the antenna 
This is not ideal because I still have to bend it like that. For this specific canopy, I'm looking at some designs where the antenna goes straight up and is protected, but um, not with this one. So just lining, oop, that's the wrong one. Here we go. We'll line this one up to get everything in. So then that bolts down and you've got a very nice compact canopy. So this system works really well. I've crashed a ton and have yet to damage this setup or knock a camera loose or have it come um, sideways. And um, you can see here it's all bolted together. You can see the internal uh, piece that holds the camera with the canopy on top. Um, this is an Ishii Neo EO10 frame. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with this stuff. And I've got the files. If you want to print the bucks on myminifactory.com, you can go down and check out those files. Another cool thing that I've noticed, uh, another really cool lesson learned, is that whenever I was doing these uh, tiny poops, I was drawing it down and then I was trying to cut a hole for the camera. And it was just a mess. It's really hard to get that all not jagged-like uh, from this. So what I figured out is if I create a hole that goes where the camera's supposed to be and runs all the way through it, so the vacuum can like pull the plastic around the sides and into the, the bottom here, I get these nice beveled edges and then I can come with a knife on the backside and cut that all out. And it looks really nice and finished and I'm not having to like be careful how I cut that. Um, for me, that was a, a cool thing that I learned that made making it look professional and nice a lot easier. Um, also, uh, to get the bucks or to get the vacuum plastic off of the bucks was getting really difficult because I was starting to get some really crazy geometry. So I basically just put a hole in it for a air chuck and then I just pushed pressurized air and it just literally just kind of pops off. It was like, I don't know, it was brilliant. I don't know. I haven't seen anyone else really do that, but for me, for this application, um, that made a huge difference for getting stuff off. And then for this one, it puts air through that hole right there. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is working really well for me. Uh, if y'all have a vacuum form box or see value in making your own whoop stuff, these work really well. I'll definitely be making more different designs um, that all integrate down on top of um, this base piece. Um, so I think that's a really good way to hold electronics and then having something that clips down top looks cool. But yeah, definitely we'll be work, doing more work on uh, a canopy that accommodates the antenna without having to bend the antenna over and all that jazz. But yeah, just wanted to give you all a quick update. That's something that I've obviously been playing with. <laughs> you can see all the different versions there. Um, but yeah, it's vacuum forming is something new to me. So I'm, I'm checking it out and figuring out what I can and can't do with it. So let's see if there's any questions. No questions for this live stream. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Again, check out the, the files on my mini factory. You can download them and print them and try it out yourself. All right. I will see you next time.